Hello ladies and gentlemen, it's Mrs. E. I'm here in the ceramic studio at Talkwitz High School. We're gonna go through the toolkit today. I also brought my toolkit from home, so I'm gonna go through some of those things that I was able to get from home in case you are not going to buy a toolkit and you just kinda of wanna use things that you have around the house. I'm also gonna go through the toolkit that you can get on Amazon, the one that I recommended that you get. And then I'm also going to introduce a few things that you're gonna need just to make sure that your clay doesn't dry out and that um, you have a successful time working with clay this semester. So let's get started. This was the one on the syllabus that I recommended. It's just a simple kit. So the first thing was making sure you get a shoebox size plastic container with a lid. Um, this is gonna be good for storing your clay projects underneath here so that when you're working on them, they don't dry out. These are the tools from the Amazon kit that I recommended. So you have your metal rib, your wooden rib, also known as kidney tools. You have your sponge. You have your trimming tools, also known as loop tools. You have your wire cutting, your clay cutting tool, your wire, and then you have your wood modeling or your um, shaping tool. So we use this for blending when we're making coil pots and different things, so you'll be using this one a lot. And then you also get a needle tool, so that'll be used for cutting clay. And then some of you, depending on if you get a different kit, every once in a while if you get a different kit, it'll come with like this little... Um, this little tool with like little wires on it for scoring as well. So that's your basic uh, kit off of Amazon there. Okay, so now I'm just gonna show you a couple other things that you're gonna want to have for working at home. So one thing you're gonna wanna have is just a bowl or some sort of container that you can put water in. You're gonna use that for your sponge. Again, if you wanna just get an extra um, food container with a lid, that's fine, but you're gonna need something that you're gonna have water in when you're working with clay. You always wanna keep water nearby to keep your tools clean, um, keep your fingers wet, that type of stuff. Uh, another thing that you're gonna to wanna to get is this is actually like a yardstick that I've cut in half. Um, they have these at Home Depot or Lowe's. Um, they're like a buck and then all I do is cut them in half. And then what I do is I put these on either side with my clay in the middle so when I roll it, your clay stays that. Um, thickness. Another thing you're going to want to get is something to be able to roll clay with. So this is just a piece of wood, so kind of like a, like a closet, which you might have in your closet or something like that. Um, you can do a wood one, or this is just a piece of PVC that you use for like sprinkler pipe or plumbing. Again, these are super cheap. Um, if you know anybody who does landscape or irrigation, a lot of times they have cutoffs. Um, just make sure that you want to make sure you sand the ends of these as well. And then I grab a bunch of stuff around my house. So like different things we use are like cookie cutters. These can be used to cut out um, bun shapes in clay when we make different things. If you have any foam stamps around your house, or again, I usually buy these on clearance at like Hobby Lobby, Walmart. Um, I get them super cheap whenever I see them. So stamps are kind of a cool way to make some patterns in the clay as well. And then we also use fabric. So. Um, this was like from an old, I don't know, I think it was like a bathing suit cover up or something and I just cut it into pieces. And again, you can roll this over the clay, it makes cool patterns. Um, this was like a tablecloth that was cut up and then again, you can roll that into make cool patterns. So just think about stuff that you kind of have around. All right, so for some of you, you wanna to put together some more items to add to that Amazon toolkit or you may want to build an at-home toolkit. So I'm gonna show you some of the things that I have um, in my at-home toolkit. And these are all things that I just got around my house because when we went off school in the spring, I didn't have my kit with me, so I put together a kit. So I'm gonna kinda show you all these things. And this was all stuff I gathered from around my house. So I'm gonna go through. Um, I think the first thing is obviously just your silverware. So if you are gonna use silverware, make sure that you just okay with your parents that you can use a set. It's not gonna ruin them. You can clean them and um, put them away when you're done. So you wanna have a spoon. This is great for blending clay. I love using a spoon actually. It's, I actually prefer that more than the some of the tools that come with the kit. The fork is great for making patterns in the clay, but also we're gonna learn how to score the clay to keep it together. So I like using the fork for that. And then the knife is great for um, cutting the clay 
So those are great to have. I also love, every kit I have, even my at school, I have a chopstick. I love having a chopstick. Um, you can use it for rolling out small pieces of clay, and then I like using the two circle designs on either side. I put these in almost all of my pottery. If you have a paintbrush, it'd be great to have an old brush around. This will be great for using with your slip. Um, I have a wooden spoon, again, not something that you have to have, but these are super cheap. I think you get three from Dollar Tree um, or 99 cent store for a dollar. So I like having these. If you're making a cylinder, you can actually use these on the walls to press out your piece and make it rounded. So I like having a wooden spoon. Uh, circle templates are something that we always use in class. I have a large container of circle templates and we just collect different lids from different things. This is the top of aluminum cans, uh, tops from different jars. So I just run them through the dishwasher and then I collect them into a bag. And then I have circles of all different sizes for whatever I wanna make. These are paper towel rolls that have been cut up. These are great to have around. You can use them for all kinds of things. I like to use them when I'm making my clay handles because I will lay the handle down over the top of it and form it. It will kind of keep its shape while it's drying until I can put the handle onto my pieces of pottery. So these are great to have. That's just one use, but I'm sure you can use them for all kinds of things. Sponges, you definitely wanna have sponges. These are just kitchen sponges. You can cut them up into whatever sizes you like to work with. I love having these because on the one side you have the regular sponge that you can work with with your pottery, but I really like having this green scrubby side because if you have any lumps or rough areas in your clay, while it's still wet, you can actually get this wet and use it kind of as sandpaper to smooth out any lumps or bumps in your clay. And then my kit also has a bunch of mason jars. I use these as forms. I'll use paper again, make sure you have some paper. It can be junk mail, it can be printer paper, newspaper. So I will measure out some pieces of paper and make templates that will fit around. You can use mason jars, old cups, old cans, bottles, whatever you want. And these are great because this is the size I actually make my coffee cups with. So anything, again, whatever you have around the house that you can use, I just happen to have a boatload of these. Tools from the garage are kind of cool. Again, make sure if you're borrowing tools that you're asking and you're putting them back where they go. You don't want to upset anybody, but uh, especially if dad's trying to fix something, you can't find his tools. I love these hex wrenches. They have these cool patterns on the edges. And so again, I use these to make a lot of uh, repetitive patterns into my pottery. And because these tools, they have all different sizes. So I like having these. Again, you can find all kinds of stuff around your house and experiment with clay and see what kind of patterns you can make. Uh, old gift cards, definitely make sure if you have old gift cards to use, save them. This is basically like the metal rib that you saw on the web, on the video that we looked at on the Amazon toolkit. This is just like that. I just took a gift card and I just cut that shape. You can cut all kinds of shapes into these gift cards to make all different kinds of patterns. Um, so if you have these, definitely save them. You can make all kinds of stuff out of these. I think I already showed you the food containers for the slip. So save any old food containers. You can use them for slip, water, whatever you want. I like to have a rag or a towel to be able to wipe off my hands while I'm working because sometimes your hands will get muddy and you'll, especially if you're working at home, you may have to stop what you're doing and go answer the phone or whatever. Have a rag nearby that you can wipe your hands off on. You also want to have a piece of fabric. So if you have fabric or laying around the house, you can just cut up a small piece just to cover your table. This is going to keep your clay from sticking to the table when you're rolling it out and working with your clay. It can be an old pillowcase. It can be an old t-shirt. I think I went and bought some fabric like this at Walmart. They have fabric that's like a dollar a yard. It doesn't really matter. This fabric is more like a canvas or a denim fabric. It's a little bit thicker. I do recommend if you can get something a little bit thicker, um, it'll work a little bit better. Uh, the thinner fabric will get wet really fast. And then I also have stamps around. These are some things that I had around the house. So I have different stamps. You can find these little letter sets at Michael's, the Target Dollar Spot, Hobby Lobby, Amazon. Some of them are a dollar, um, anywhere up to like six dollars. 
If you, this one was $6, I think it was from Hobby Lobby, but it was 50% off. They have them 50% off like once a month, so I got them for like three bucks. So I love using the stamps. You can type, you can stamp your name into the bottom of your pottery or put words on your pottery. So I like having those type of things. And then you also wanna make sure that you have some sort of surface to be able to put your pottery on, especially if you're making a large pot. You wanna have some sort of surface. These are some thin wood boards. Again, you can pick these up pretty much anywhere. It doesn't matter if you're using thick plywood, cardboard, um, whatever, just make sure it's sturdy and you can always put plastic over it as well. I usually go to Home Depot and buy a sheet and then I have it cut up into these, but I'm sure if you go to like Hobby Lobby or any craft store, any place that sells crafts, I'm sure you can find like a small piece of wood that you can use. I like wood the best because um, if it does get wet, it dries out, but I will usually put plastic over it to keep it from getting too wet. I don't want it to warp. You also want to make sure, I think I told you on your list, you want to have two gallon Ziploc bags. Another thing you can do is I save all of my grocery bags. You can use trash bags, but you want to make sure that you have plenty of plastic around. You need to make sure that your projects and your clay is always well wrapped so that it doesn't dry out. So I think that's everything from my home toolkit. I remember if I showed you the plastic, the water bottle, so you can use any spray bottle once it's empty with whatever you had in it. Um, this is just from hairspray. Be careful with chemicals, but you know, hairspray and things like that, you can just empty it out and use it to keep your clay wet. You wanna make sure your clay doesn't dry out while you're working with it. So this is something you can do. When you're done working with your projects, you can even mist it down um, just to keep it wet before you wrap it up for the next project as well. So hopefully that helped you come up with some ideas of things that you can add to your clay toolkit. Remember that there's so many things that you can find around your house and there's all kinds of really inexpensive things that you might be able to find when you head out to the store. Uh, don't feel like you have to have everything at once. As you work with clay, you're gonna add the things that you feel that you need and the things that you're missing and the things that are gonna make your life easier. Um, every ceramic artist is different and everyone has their own things that they prefer. So I'm excited to start working with clay and seeing what you guys create this semester. Have a great weekend, get those kits together, and let me know if you have any questions.